the last three days of hearings have revealed very good news. Uh, they have revealed the news that Judge Barrett is going to be confirmed by this committee and by the full Senate. With two full days of questioning, we've seen that our Democratic colleagues have very few questions actually to raise about Judge Barrett's qualifications. Very little of the time we've spent in here has concerned her record as a judge, her 20 years as, an, as a respected scholar. Instead, much of this hearing has focused on political attacks directed at President Trump. Um, I recognize our Democratic colleagues are not going to be voting for President Trump in November. That's certainly their prerogative. Uh, but they've largely abandoned even trying to make the case that Judge Barrett is anything other than exceptionally well qualified uh, to serve as a justice. It is striking that as we sit here right now in this committee room, there are only two Democratic senators in the room. If you look at the dais, there's chair after chair after chair that is empty. The Democratic senators are no longer even attending. I assume they'll show up for their time. But it is indicative of what they're tacitly admitting, which is that they don't have substantive criticism. Mr. Chairman, may I make a point of personal privilege? Of course. We're yes, in the midst may. of a COVID-19 crisis, a pandemic, and some members are in their offices following this on television, and to suggest their absence here means they're not following or participating is incorrect. I would note the senator from Illinois and his personal privilege somehow omitted the fact that, that all but two of the Democrats were physically here yesterday. And after the questioning, they made the decision not to be here. That's fine. That, you're, you're welcome to make that decision. But it's indicative when it comes to the time of the questioning that this side of the aisle does not have arguments against Judge Barrett that have any chance of prevailing. I do want to address uh, a couple of the individual points that have been made. So many of the Democratic senators have talked about Obamacare. At, at great length. At times I have been confused and I thought we were on the Health Committee instead of the Judiciary Committee because it has been such a central talking point for every Democrat that if President Trump is reelected, they assert everyone with pre-existing conditions is going to be denied health care and, and people will be dying in the streets. And I get that's their re-election message. It's not actually connected to reality. It's not actually true. Uh, Every member of the Senate agrees we're going to protect pre-existing conditions. And I would note that not a one of the Democratic senators who raised that point have addressed the very real and catastrophic failures under Obamacare. Obamacare has doubled the profits of the big health insurance companies, doubled them. Obamacare has been great corporate welfare for giant health insurance companies. At the same time, according to the Kaiser Foundation, Premiums, average families' premiums have risen more than seven, risen seven thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars per year on average. That is catastrophic. That millions of Americans can't afford health care. It is a catastrophic failure of Obamacare. 